If we asked you to name the biggest thing that low rated and high rated tanks do differently, what would you say? Most people think that better tanks can handle bigger pulls. After all, that's what Mythic Plus is all about. Tanks need to be fearless, willing to take a few risks for the chance at a massive payoff. But here's the truth. Being a good tank is more than just being cool. What matters the most is being smart. In fact, what separates good and bad tanks is not about how big they make their pulls, but more about how and when they decide to pull small. We're not playing Mario Kart here. You can't just plug in a route and press the W key all dungeon. Instead, you need to learn how and when to adapt your route based on your team comp, the knowledge of each player, and the mistakes that are bound to happen. That's why we teamed up with Marez, a multi-MDI champion and world first raider from Echo, to guide us through every dungeon in Season 3, with the goal of teaching you how to adapt your runs based on the millions of things that can and will go wrong. He even took the time to go through his own keys in a brand new course at skillcap.com, where he explains his thought process in each dungeon one pull at a time. Along the way, he points out his own mistakes, showing you exactly what to avoid during your runs. This is a rare opportunity to learn from one of the best players in WoW history, and implement proven strategies into your own gameplay that are guaranteed to make you play better and smarter in your next run. So after this video, be sure to check out our brand new course at skillcap.com and learn more about our rating game guarantee. You can even use the links below for an exclusive discount offer to sign up. For now, let's get back to the video. There are three core concepts that affect how and when you need to adapt your route. We will be getting most of our value at the base level, cooldowns, which directly affect how big or how small we can pull. Most people would stop here, but not you, because the next layer is group composition and how the unique strengths and weaknesses of your party matter a lot more than most people think. And finally, we have our last layer, time, being able to conceptualize the distance between pulls to optimize cooldown recovery. If you can manage to master all three, then you can pull just like Mara's and Mythic Plus. To build our foundation, let's dive into a tall Dazar, where Mara's will teach us about our most important layer, cooldowns. Most of you probably know that group cooldowns are the most fundamental variable for determining pull size. More CDs means being able to pull bigger and vice versa. This is basic information. But even the basics have nuance, and later in this video, we will explain why Mara's chooses a slightly different route after the first boss. While most people would simply grab these small mobs here, Mara's actually sequences this pack with a bigger pull in the middle of the dungeon. And if you look at any popular route right now for Atal Dazar, there are almost zero guides that tell you to do this. Mara's made this decision intentionally, and we will explain why later in this guide. But one part of this decision was based on his team's defensive cooldowns. Let's hear what he has to say. Therefore, we opt out to do this small pull here, um, as this pull doesn't require any cooldowns and just defensive cooldowns. Um, this is quite nice because as you can see from the boss fight, no one take, takes any damage basically. So everyone has the defensive cooldowns ready. You can see the demon and does blur ready, the druid has barking ready, the warlock has wall ready and is about to get dark pack ready. So no one in this group should be in danger apart from the shaman. He has his earth elemental, but he also has a group utility that when he does damage, he will heal us. Now let's move on to a poll later on, where once again, we need to quickly gauge our team's cooldown budget. And already you should tell that we are a bit limited. All right, let's pause. Here we can easily see that our Warlock and Demon Hunter are missing multiple major cooldowns. Our Shaman is less cooldown dependent, but now we need to make a decision. Should Mara's pull big or pull small? The answer should be obvious, pull small. With a limited cooldown budget, we can't afford to be aggressive. So for now, we will play conservatively pulling three mobs into our group while we wait for cooldowns to recover. Even though this might seem too safe, we will be rewarded next pull. Because right after this, we're going to be dealing with a much larger pull, where we will be dealing with a five mob pack that can deal a ton of damage. But since we just played safe, we will have everything we need to deal with this new challenge. Here, Mara's will also do something very intelligent. Notice how his group is still positioning for the pull. In this moment, he is indirectly under pressure. Because of this, he leg sweeps, not only as a form of damage reduction, but to give his team a bit of leeway for positioning in the room. Anyways, because he played conservatively on the previous pack, Maris is able to safely take his group into a more dangerous pull since now is the right moment for cooldowns to carry. It should be no surprise that once this pull is done, Maris will then go back to pulling small, only taking three mobs while we wait for cooldowns to recover. And this is where things get interesting because now we not only have a big pull in front of us, but a boss immediately after. Meanwhile, our group is about to have most of their cooldown budget, which means we need to make another decision. Do we send CDs now, or do we save them for the boss? Here, the answer is a bit more complicated. We need to think about the difficulty and mechanics of the boss. 
During this fight, the boss will damage themselves with transfusion, which means as long as everyone does their job, we really don't need CDs at all for this encounter. This is why Merez introduces an extra mob in front of the boss when his group CDs are ready. That way, we can use our cooldown budget on this pressure point knowing that CDs probably aren't needed for the upcoming fight. Actively tracking CDs helps avoid the classic Goldilocks problem in WoW, where tanks either play too aggressive or too safe, and is one of the many traps we actively try and teach players to avoid, especially in our tanking course. To see the Goldilocks problem in action, let's check out some gameplay. Here, this group will advance past the first boss with Paladin and Hunter CDs almost ready. When instead of pushing towards a larger pull, our tank will decide to pull small, not just one time with these non-elites. And not just two times with this small pack on the bridge, but three times in a row, resulting in a two minute period where our Ret Paladin doesn't even use wings because using it on these smaller packs doesn't seem worth it. In this case, playing too safe was the reason why this key went untimed. So just to recap, when deciding how to navigate your route, the first step is to think about cooldown cadence. When cooldowns are ready, you can afford to go big, but when they're limited, this is one clear sign to scale things back. We've now built the base of our pyramid using our team's available cooldowns to affect our decision making. The next level is more advanced. Your group composition and how the classes that make up your party can influence the size of pulls. To begin to understand how this works, let's look at the first pull in this Throne of Tides, where Merez admits that he makes a big pulling mistake. But let's hear it in his own words. So we're trying to stack up a big pull here. As you can see is here, we are gathering the first two mobs at the second pack. We are trying, we're gonna kick the second caster in here. And we're also adding the third pack in. This is actually quite hard for our group comp. As you can see here now is that we don't have really interrupts for these back mobs here. And we only have one melee kick that was used on the front mob here. And now we used a single kick from a warlock of the back mob, which stuns the mob so, so he doesn't walk in. This makes it really difficult to stack up and should definitely be avoided. This was something we should have not done. We should have not added this last pack here that has two caster mobs. Our comp can straight up just not deal with it good. Um, so don't do this if your group comp is looking like this. If you can stack up the pack easier by moving in this other caster and you have more kicks in your group comp, this is definitely a viable choice, but not for us. In this case, we somehow managed to survive, barely. As you can see here, the tank is dropping very low. Everyone is a little bit struggling. We're using defensives left, right, and center. And uh, we can see here, clicks even dying because there's too many water bolts of these castles going off. We straight up do not have kicks to deal with them. We only have one melee kick that's got used. We have one mage kick ready that we could use, but it's not getting used right now since he's also getting chased down by Spide. Generally, just a very bad pull. Should not have done this. As you can see, this first caster here that we left alone in the back at 80% HP basically and we didn't almost gain anything from adding this last pack into the mix here. Going back to Ataldazar, we have a similar situation with two Witch Doctors that will chain cast, but this time we have a kick budget that can actually support this with four short CD interrupts. In fact, at this point we might be over budgeted with kicks for this pull, but the point still stands. Your group comp affects how you're decision making. You can't just think of cooldowns. You need to take it a step further and adapt your pulls around the limitations of your comp. On the other hand, sometimes doing slightly larger pulls can be beneficial for your group comp. Even though this is pretty standard, Maris pulled this pack on the right before jumping down to the first boss. This is because enhancement shamans can do a lot of funnel damage with more mobs to attack. And since this is an easy boss and the additional mobs pose no threat, it's a no-brainer to introduce them into the fight. Later on, the group will intentionally spawn some raptors, once again to buff the shaman's funnel damage without much additional risk. It's crucial as a tank to understand the damage profiles of your groups. Here our tank decides to pull the first boss without introducing any of the non-elites. This is really bad considering that our shaman, fairy warrior, and frost mage will all benefit from introducing additional mobs, all without any risk to our group. At this point, we've not only established that cooldowns are important for pull size, but so is group composition. Your party needs to have the right tools to manage larger pulls, especially if multiple stops are needed and you need to actively consider how pull size can be handled by damage profiles. Now we need to add our final layer, time. Here's where things get a bit abstract. But have you ever put a pizza in the oven without setting a timer, thinking to yourself, I know when it's going to be 10 minutes, but then 10 minutes go by and instead of a golden brown crust, you arrive to the most diabolical creation your oven has ever created. The truth is, we are all bad at keeping track of time in our head. And more often than not, we underestimate how long it takes to get from point A to point B. At this point, you might be asking what any of this has to do with Mythic Plus. Let's go back to our pyramid. 
We know that cooldowns are the most important consideration when pulling, which means we can adapt our routes based on the time it takes for cooldowns to recover. Remember at the start of this video when we said that Marez chose a slightly different route after the first boss? That's because he was calculating the time it would take to go to the next possible big pull in the dungeon. By thinking about distance, Marez is able to choose the best route based on cooldown recovery. This leads him down a relatively unconventional route where he's able to do a bigger pull in the center of the dungeon. And by the time the pull is over, he can then use the distance to the next pull to recover some important cooldowns, allowing him to chain two big pulls back to back, being as efficient as possible with his party's cooldown budget. When navigating your route and deciding what to pull, you have to think about more than just group cooldowns. Now keep in mind that there are definitely more considerations when deciding how to pull and what mob to prioritize. And in a follow-up video, we will cover dungeon pacing and the micro decisions you need to make on every pull, because let's face it, Mythic Plus is complicated. For that reason, we had Marez put together full commentaries for every dungeon this season, which can only be found at skillcap.com. In this brand new course, Marez explains his thought process behind every pull and even points out some of the most common mistakes that players make when navigating pushing higher keys. This course goes hand in hand with all of our class guides, which teach you high level information you need to do the biggest damage, while also learning how to abuse mechanics that increase the value of your entire toolkit, including CC and survivability. All of this and more is why Skillcap continues to offer a rating gain guarantee, where we promise that you will be able to increase your IO score while using our guides. So if you want to stay ahead of the competition this season, visit skillcap.com using the link below. Until then, we want to thank you all for watching. See you soon.